Hey everyone, Sir Terma here again. And today, like I mentioned yesterday, I want to show you some a little bit more competitive decks. And this time around, I'm bringing Talia 6, which once again is going to be one of the most popular decks that you're going to see in this weekend seasonal, in my opinion. A lot of top players really like this Talia 6 right now. It has really good matchup into a lot of the control decks that are popular, like Field the Rush, uh, like Bay Garnora. It does really well versus this deck. It also kind of can hold its ground against against Lulu, even though that's an aggro deck, because we have a lot of removal between Drop the Bow and Poke Stick, and have a lot of blockers between the Chemis and Rock Copper, and we have a great way to deal with Jinx on the right of the Arcane value. So it does very well against those Jinx decks because of that, while also dealing well against the, uh, against the control decks, which makes it an excellent pick for people to bring in their lineups this weekend. Now, it does lose a little bit more harder to like more traditional aggro decks, in my opinion, like Pirate Aggro, or any type of like burn aggro like that, like spider spiders can do a little bit worse into those type of decks. But because of the addition of the rock bear shepherd, there are a lot of room to be able to actually stabilize and just have like this really big shepherd in the field, especially if you can go shepherd into desert naturalist. That's another reason why we have triple of desert naturalist for that combo. I don't think triple shepherd is necessary though. I think just two is enough. There's a lot of ways for opponents to remove this card. So I think it's a little bit great to go for more than that. The only the only room here that I'm thinking of is I don't know how good Herald the Magus is. Maybe it's better to just go for a third right of the Arcane. But I do like the Herald the Magus as a way to buff our champions in certain situations. And I absolutely love the Safety Inspector. I would not remove the Safety Inspector. I'm not on three of it because we are playing one Herald the Magus. You can either go three Inspectors and cut the Magus. But I do think having three Inspectors can also be a little bit awkward sometimes. I think two is just the right amount because we have a lot of draw between Perseverian and Pokey Stick to be able to actually draw one of them. Uh, the Explosive Minefield ends up being really good to stopping a lot of what the opponent wants to do as well. Can can deal with an Echo, for example. Um, and yeah, I mean, again, you're finishing the games either through the burn between six and Inspector or through the Overwhelms with Talia six with a Herald the Magus or we are not so able to finish the game. In the meantime, you just kind of have a lot of chump blockers, a lot of just in general, mid-range value that the opponent has to deal with. It's very easy for the opponent to get burned out because of all the cannons and all the scrappy bombs. So just kind of keep that in mind. If you see the lines, you just burn them out, just burn them out right away. Just be a little bit careful about the aggression. I think that's the only weakness about this deck is that it can be very vulnerable to a very aggressive start for the opponent. But again, very popular deck that should be popular in the seasonal. You want to practice playing it or you want to practice playing against it because you're going to run into it 100%. Anyways. I hope you enjoyed the games coming up soon. If you do, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post a lot of videos every single day. I'll see you at the end of the video for some relevant tips. In this match, we're going against Leona Aphelios. This is one of the matches that is very good for us. I like the drop the bomb and the pokey stick. I think the drop the bomb plus pokey stick comes pretty good. We didn't want to see the heads plus in my field this early, but. I guess we'll take it, right? I guess we'll take it. And there we go from there. Huh. They forced us to we'll go here to block to begin with. The opponent, opponent wants to take this block, I'll take the block too. Because what I'm worried about is a potential winding light later on. So I think it's fine for us to take that block. Let's go second chemist. Let's start kind of tubo leveling our Talia. And our six as well. Alphys, alright. It's better than having the rock hopper die to the Balfis, in my opinion. We still have enough here to kill their stuff. There goes the third chemist. If you go like this, I'm gonna have to drop the bomb. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. <laughs> Yeah, they can't, they can't go like that without drop the bomb messing them up. I don't think it's, don't think it's ever correct to attack with this chemist. I think we just gotta wait at this point. I can't always go... I think I go here, right? So I think we go here. That destroys it. We still get... We get to copy this landmark next turn, the second Scrappy. And this becomes a really big unit that the opponent has to deal with because it's a 5-5. Five five. It's a second Balfies, all right? That's two Balfies out of the way. Those cannot do the Daybreak anymore. 
So I cannot do the daybreak anymore, so it has no way to stop this rock there. Siphon just blocking with the spiderling. We play Talia next turn. Is it ever better to actually go ahead plus in my field? Our sun will not set today. Hmm. I'm debating if it's better to copy the heads plus in my field and just turn out their board. So we got this. And we got this, we have too many cards in our hand. No, I think I like the Talia. I think I like the Talia here. I'll have to take this from the Baboon. I have to take the damage from the Baboon. I guess I can always block it with the Rock Bear. And that just sets up for a Jug the Bomb to be able to finish the game. We're gonna start with the Rock Hopper first so that we have access to the Rolling Sands and the leveled up Talia. And then we have access to drop the bomb. The only downside is that their their team does get bigger still. If they have Leona, that can also Leona is not double double at least, so that's not horrible. And if they play Leona, they're eating the Rolling Sands value. The Sunhawk can be a little bit more annoying than the Leona though, because then yeah, obviously they, they 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 get like I said they get that uh the stun value there. Their battle piece, okay, so they actually go for that. So let's go ahead and go like this. I think it's worth it to stop it. I think it's worth it to stop it. You're taking the 10 damage. Woo! Drop the bomb to stop the Baboon. Because the Daybreak can be really annoying if the opponent has like Leona and multiple of the stuns. This guy still gets really big, which is also another problem. Drop the bomb gets them down to five because we have double of them. And yeah. Yeah, this is the Leona. Now, she's not leveled up, right? But we don't want her to level up, so we have to drop the bomb now. That way, your opponent cannot trigger Daybreak anymore. If they, if they try to kill the Rock Hopper, the second drop the bomb is going to kill the Leona. And now we don't even have to worry about Leona kind of stunning us. Boom. So now we don't have to worry about the Leona stun at the beginning of the game. At the beginning of the turn. We go second rock hopper. I guess opponent could have access for vengeance, and that's what can kill the Talia here. But we just have the safety inspector now, so I think we're chilling. I don't think it's ever correct to attack with the rock hopper. I guess that's true, right? Because if the opponent doesn't have vengeance. Then they can block here, right? If they have vengeance, they get to kill her, yeah. But now we still have the safety inspector, and that gets us deal to that lets us deal six damage. So now we're just looking for one more damage. There we go. Could have another sunburst. Okay, no, that's not sunburst. The problem is that we don't have. I guess we will have the heads close in my field. Ah, that gets us there. That gets us there. Wait, no, we have lethal because these are each going to do one damage, right? So this is going to be five, three. Opponent needs to kill this guy. And they just tapped out of any way to kill him, right? They don't have a way to kill him here now because they tapped out of the of the um, all in common. I guess they could still have another Sunburst. I just don't block because I don't want to lose the Meteor Shower. Definitely don't want to lose to the Meteor Shower. We go here. Go here. Play a second drop the bomb. Great. And then your opponent goes down to two next turn. We destroy the second Scrappy Bomb and we win the game. Once they had the vengeance for the ta for the Talia, it got a little bit dicey. Um, but the top deck of the inspector completely saved the game because of all the scrappy ones that we have in our in our hand, in our field, sorry. What if we stun?
What if we stun Talia? Stun again? Stun the whole board? Stun the whole board three times? We have this, right? Oh, what if the opponent has a way to get rid of the two landmarks? Yeah, what if the opponent has a nine cast obliterate? But then they lose to Talia, right? If they have the nine cast obliterate, they still lose to the Talia. Nah, it's just Ragoon. Alright. So we go like this. I just wanted to I just wanted to have another card that could present Leto. I just want to have another character percent lethal uh, in case that the opponent has enough healing, but I don't think they have enough healing anyway. But you never know, you never know if they are playing, if they are playing like the star shaping, right? So if they're playing the star shaping, I have to be concerned about that, and they don't have it. You never know if they're playing the star shaping, so I think it is correct to just develop the Talia, just because he's not an open deck list. So he did. now we do get punished. We do get punished by the. Three cost stun as well. Because the opponent did a uh, invoke. Well, we knew they didn't have it because they had played the two mana Dogo. So they would have needed to invoke again, trifecta into the stun. But yeah, they still would lose to the inspection from there. So GG's. In this match, we're going against Rumble Pain. Ooh, okay. So this is going to be a little of a struggle for us. I don't know that I like the Rat of Arcane. I guess it's nice, right? Because it's a, it's a way to kill their Bane. It's a way to kill their Bane. The problem is that I don't really have... I don't really have a lot of landmarks that I can actually use with the Rat of Arcane, right? I'm fine to put the Rock Hopper here. I'm fine to put the Rock Hopper here, sacrifice the Chemist into whatever unit the opponent summons. We still have the Scrap Room to kill like a... They hit the overwhelm one, huh? We still have the scrappy run to kill the Bane, for example, with the right of our hand. We just have to be now be worried about a rumble that's gonna have Fisher Whack attached to it. We could also go. We could also go drop the bomb. Into right of our cane on the rumble. If we do that, I think it's better to go like this. Come on, the now, opponent did keep the three mana here, so that's a little bit annoying. I think it's correct. I think it's correct to just remove the spell shield with the drop the bomb and then set up for a battle of arcane. The problem is that this is very telegraph, right? Because the opponent probably just doesn't play Rumble here. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's, it's very telegraph. It's very, very telegraph. Uh, if we play this, we're just going to be losing to that. This is still going to be a problem here. That that Broadwin is actually a problem. Because the opponent can give a combat reel and he can kill our six. I don't want to use the drop the bomb yet. If I play the Rock Shepherd, it's going to be the same way. The opponent can just go ahead. I think I still play the Rock Shepherd. I think I like the Rock Shepherd, even if the opponent can kill it with the Brow Wind. I think I want to have this big Grumpy there coming down soon. A Grumpy Rock Bear. Wow, that's a triple Hookmaster star. Wow. Yeah, so they can... Because the, the combat rule will allow him to kill my six, which I don't like. I think this is okay. We can now also stun the Rumble, if anything. So let's say the opponent goes for Rumble here. No, it's not going to be a Rumble. I still... I think we can go Rock Hopper now, right? Because the opponent's not able to play the Rumble. Alright. I like the six. This is such an awkward start from the opponent. I like, I like the six here. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Now we have access to a sober as well. I, I still think I always the keep this combo of drop the bomb plus plus right of arcane for the potential rumble turn. Also the right of arcane as well for the bane if they get the bane instead. Wow, they're gonna have. They do have a pretty wide board. We will have the rock. We will have the drop bear though, which is kind of nice. We also now have the six the bomb. I 
I think this is fine. This is gonna get challenged by the Squire anyways, right? This is always gonna get challenged by the Squire anyway, so I don't think it's a big deal to do this. I think I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put the Bouncing Bomb on the Squire. And if the opponent plays Rumble, perfect. Now I can actually go like this. Now there is one concern here. I wanna play the Drop the Bomb here first. Now, if the opponent has Cataclysm, we will lose this 6, which is also a concern. But the opponent will have to... I guess the opponent could also go Combat Reel here and put this out of range. But then that means that they don't have the Overwhelm equipment anymore. They still get Overwhelm... I guess... What, what did they discard? There's the Cataclysm. That means that we guarantee the kill in the rumble, and I think I'm fine. I think I think this wins us the game, by the way. Because now we just kill the rumble. Ah, uh, we go here. We could have kept the six instead of doing the uh, his spell, but I think it was important because we got to clear their board. We have the hibernated rock bear to block all the units. Opponent is down to just no cards. We have some more value here with the Perseverium. I think we got this. I think we absolutely got this. We can play the Endless Devout here. Give ourselves another blocker and another landmark. Ah, uh, cool. Uh, we can go Perseverium. That's not a big deal. Now what? If you go like this, I'm, I'm taking the three. I don't really care. Yeah, I'm taking the three. Taking the three. Get rid of your Hugmaster. We have the stun for a second rumble. Gonna really get for the already went for the cataclysm. We can go here. There goes the second six. And now the point is gonna lock down because the six is gonna just burn them down. Any unit that they summon gets hit by this thing. Do we have Lito here? We have Lito here, right? The only thing we have to play around is the opponent having access to a single combat. And the single combat doesn't kill the rock bear anymore, because that's what we buffed it up with one more health, and that's game. GG's. Unfortunately for us, they only have one rumble, and they didn't have a bunch of spell in their hands. Like, maybe they, you know, could have like a... Like, they also tapped out of the way to save Rumble, right? If they, if they kept mana for like a sharp set, maybe I wouldn't have done the Rattle right Arcane. I still I still think I always whip it, right? We had that from the start, but we got a little bit lucky of the opponent having a more unit sent to hand, so GG's. In this match, we're gonna against Wentz Katarina. This might be the new version that's playing stuff like Might. So I need to be slightly careful. Honestly, the Rattle right Negation seems nice. But he also feels a little too a little bit too slow at the same time. I might commit for the double chemist, but I don't think it's also correct. Either. I think I want to look for, I want to look for drop the bomb right for Katarina. So I think one chemist, one debat is okay. See if we get the drop the bomb. I think I'd rather draw again. Try to look for that drop the bomb. I think it's gonna be important. I think the rock hopper is not necessary right now. I think I'd rather. Rather look for that drop bomb because I need a way to deal with Katarina. If we don't get it by next turn, we're in trouble. So if we don't get the way to deal, oh, come on, please, please give me the drop bomb, please. I'm so sad. Yeah, here goes your Katarina now. So we're in trouble now. The opponent's gonna be able to put way too much pressure on us. I'm gonna block like this. Let them kill the Dibari if they want to. It's just gonna enable my Kalia eventually. No one gets in my way. Opponent could still have access to the foyer, so I don't think the rock hopper is correct. I think we just go for a second devout. We didn't get to drop the bomb. Maybe we should have mulligan for it more. Knowing how important it was for us to kill that Katarina. Yeah, opponent's gonna decide to go face instead, which is again is fine with me because it just means that we get a blocker here that can continue blocking any time that we want. Hmm. We do have access to the Rite of Arcane, which is not bad. I'm gonna go like this first, because I might, I want, I might want to keep the mana for this. I might want to keep the mana for this. 
opponent goes for that. Okay, so since they went like this, I think we just go second debout here. The only downside is not being able to play Talia next turn, because I think I want to keep the mana for the Rat of Arcane to be able to actually kill that Katarina. We can only has one Hollow Buff, so we can still block with the second debout. We can still copy this with Talia next turn, so it's not a big deal. Wow, the opponent does not respect... Does not respect us having access to Pokestick, huh? Wow. Uh, I'll allow it. I think it's going to be Talia. I think it's going to be Talia next turn. She's already leveled up as well. Yeah. We still have no mana for Rider of our team. We go for the Talia here. Push a ton of damage. Our landmarks are both going to trigger, giving us a ton of blockage. We still have access to the Rider of our team. We can... The only downside is not having any landmark that we actually can use Rider of our cane on. And if the opponent takes enough damage, the safety inspector can burn them out. As well as six, obviously. Six is going to be leveled up. We have a Marvel Earth. Opponent's going to go for the Pokey Stick. So that tells me that they probably have access to a flock or something, I guess. Double flock or another battle piece of flock. Or just wanted to reduce the damage then. I'm not scared of almost anything that the opponent has right now. Okay, so I mean, it just means that we push an additional two damage, right? Rider negation is necessary for uh, Harrowing or the Chumpo. So I don't think we ever commit the Rider negation. I think we're in a position where we're in a really good spot. Because anytime that they summon Gwen or Katarina, we can just play Rider right Arcane right and just ruin their day. That's one flock. If the opponent kills Talia here, I'm willing to play this. The, I'm gonna obviously play the chemist that gives me the landmark that I need. All right. And we also get up sober, so I think Six just finishes the game next turn. Yeah, I think I think Fake, I think Six is just gonna finish the game next turn. Let's play the chemist. That way, I have the landmark that I can use for the Rider of Arcane. We still have blockers for all their stuff, so I'm not too concerned about this. Really? I might go here, just because this is going to die to the Katarina Blaze Edge anyways. going to drop the 6 now. I just can't wait. Here we have Rider of Arcane as a backup, because the body's going to try to go for Katarina now. Say, they just, they, they're just going to die next turn. Let the blood There's the Katarina. Boom. That's dealing three damage to the opponent. And we can now also play Unravel Earth to make it so that the six can burn them down even more. If the opponent decides to attack with the butler, we have plenty of blockers. Okay. So they're looking to kill this six with flock. Am I okay with that? I mean, if they flock here, we still have lethal everywhere else, no? I think we actually go for the Rock Hopper. Instead of going Rebel Earth, I go for the Rock Hopper because it gives me an additional attacker. Opponent's literally at 8 HP and we have Absorber enabled. So even if they have the flock here, we still just win the game. And now we have Rider Negation as a backup. We have 6 that's going to present 2 damage to the burn. And this should be it. GG's. Yeah, the Rider of Arcane is just so powerful against it, because he can kill the Gwen. Obviously, Jump the Bone would have been better to kill the Katarina before she leveled up, but we'll take it that way as well, so GG's. In this match, we're going against Aatrox and... This is a pretty decent hand, I think. I think I like having the early, the early like, aggression, right? The, Chemist into Hopper into Shepherd into Arcane six. So having all this landmark now ends up being even better. Ah, uh, okay. So I can just attack here. I think it's always better to drop the bomb first. That way we play around a Darkened Spear. That way we play around a Darkened Spear here. 
We still get to push two damage here. We can play Rock Topper afterwards, or we can play Rider right Arcane instead. Either one, or now we can play the Devout, right? All right, let's force him to have the momentous choice. All right, I think that delays them a lot. That delays them way too much, in my opinion. They don't get to get the Darkness Spear value. Uh, might just open though, to be honest. I might just open with the with the two one. If the opponent doesn't block, then we just push some damage. The only problem with this is that the opponent already has the cane in their hand, so the shepherd might not be great no matter what we do. Yeah, the shepherd might not be great regardless. I think I like the open one less unit that the opponent might have. We can play the shepherd here. If the opponent plays cane, we could stun it. I guess it doesn't matter because we still get the value here. We still get the value from the Shepherd, even if the Shepherd dies right now. I don't think this is what we want to stun just yet. I don't think this is what we want to stun just yet. If they don't, if they don't put the Shepherd, we can kill the Bakai, right? Cool. I like the six here. It's almost leveled up. We're pushing some damage here. If the opponent tries to get greedy. The problem with the stun. There is one problem with the stun. The problem with the stun is that the opponent can still go for a cane. A cane spell, right? I guess if they go for the cane spell. We can have Sober. It has to be exactly cane spell. If they summon a unit, it just means that the six levels up and then we enable the Absorber. So this is just game then, right? Okay, let me think. Let me think this through. This is 9, 11. So like, if we pull like this, Nine. This is only dealing another four. I need to kill this Aatrox. So I'm gonna have to just commit the six to kill the Aatrox then, right? And just push the overwhelm damage that way. Maybe we don't put the damage on the six. Maybe it's actually better. Maybe it's actually better not to put the damage on the six and just put it on this guy. The other option here is to save the inspector. The other option is to save the inspector. I have the stun available for us. Could be safety inspector that is the correct play to be honest. I think it's safety inspector. Even if the opponent's Aatrox is gonna heal too. We get to push six. Actually, no, this is lethal this way, right? Because now we can pull like this. Yeah, this is exactly 16. Yeah, so it was safety inspector. Because I forgot about the plus two plus, 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 plus six. Dealing 16. Oh wow, we actually found the line. I almost missed that line. My my thought about the safety inspector is that the opponent will still survive, maybe like around two or three HP because of the Aatrox heal. And then we have the safety inspector to both stun, to, to threaten the stun and also just threaten lethal because of the thing, right? Opponent has a choice of killing six or, or the safety inspector cannot kill both, but GG's. In this match, we're going against Helios Diana. It should... Wait, 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 sorry. This is not Leona. <laughs> I'm so used to seeing Leona with Diana, Leona with Apelius that it didn't process to me. That the opponent is not playing Leona. So this is going to be a more... I think this is just pure invoke then, right? With atrocity as an alternate win condition. If that's the case... Okay, I was going to play... I was going to play Unravel Earth into Rider Arcane if the opponent played Aphelios. 
But now that we got the chemist, I think we can safely just play Perseverium. Yeah, I think we can safely play Perseverium into Chemist next turn and then have access to Rat of Arcane if we need to kill an Aphelios, right? Yes, you get Diana, you get to push your two damage. Big whoop. I guess Balfis here is a little bit annoying. The idea is us having a landmark that we can do this. I think this is better off in Aphelios than it ever is in the Diana. So if they want to challenge, I think that's fine with us. This is a great draw. I'm gonna pass. I don't want to. I don't want to kill the shepherd if they have access to Sha uh, to Pelka Cave. So if they have access to Pelka Cave, I don't want to kill the shepherd. It could just be more like an aggro deck. I still think the shepherd is probably correct. We could also go desert naturalist, giving myself a blocker. Now cascade at that point wouldn't be enough. Opponent still gets to kill this guy. I could go desert naturalist. I just like the shepherd because it, it might be too much damage that we're taking here. I think I pass. I think if opponent doesn't attack, I'm, I'm fine, right? If opponent doesn't attack, because opponent wants to attack because of the flight. So... Yeah, just attack. <laughs> I don't think there's a lot to... I don't think there's a lot for it, my friend. Just attack, do your thing. Get your draw. We're down to 11. We have to try to prevent ourselves from getting aggro down. Unto does, so they get to summon another one. Okay, so we are just gonna get aggro down then, huh? For fortunately for us, the, the good thing about the Shepherd, unless the opponent plays like a random Quietus, it will give us some nice units, right? Now, by us playing this, we can't play the Desert Naturalist, but that's okay, because I think I'm gonna play six instead. I guess we could play the Desert Naturalist, but we're gonna be one off. No, I think I think I prefer the six that gives me access to Rat of Arcane for me to be able to kill like an Aphelios if we need to. If we pass, we're okay. Don't think I need to rush this. We have blockers. We have Poke Sticks. Six is gonna level up. We just need to care. We just need to be careful about that Leon, that, that Diana. Yeah, so six levels up here. We can play Desert Naturalist, giving ourselves two more blockers. While also having access to Rider Arcane and Pokey Stick to stop their flight. Now I need to be able to kill this Diana. I guess we don't have a we don't have a landmark now. I need to stop this Diana, because Diana will be able to kill my stuff, right? So I need to stop this Diana more than anything else. So I think I'm going to just sacrifice my mana gem. If the opponent has a second Diana, then that's a problem. She's going to be more important than Aphelios at this point. But she could also have the overwhelm from the Aphelios. Now, a double pill cascade still loses to a Poké Stick. A second Diana is a little bit more annoying, but not impossible to deal with. And we have blockers for everything else and are forcing the opponent into an awkward spot next time. They do have the second Diana. Okay, so... They get to kill six. They still have the weapon here. If it's the overwhelm weapon, I'm in trouble. And it was the overwhelm weapon. So this is going to let them get to seven. So they can push four here. Before we commit the Poké Stick, let's wait to see what they do. No more lies. It still goes after the I 6, so it's only doing hurt. 2 then. Because we're going to Poké Stick this. Opponent doesn't have access to Pell Cascade. We go here. We have a second 6 anyways. We attack. It's a little bit annoying because I want to play this Rider of Arcane on the Diana. 
opponent could also have access to the overwhelm next turn and that could be the end of the game at the same time i also want to be able to play six before we actually play the Rider of arcane when it gets a lot of value here so i need to I either need I either need to I think I need to kill Diana because the overwhelm potential is too strong if the opponent has access to winding light. So I won't be able to play the six here. At the same time, Aphelios can still give the overwhelm, right? And, and do other things here. Okay, we just think we can just get burned out as well. So it's gonna be the seven on instead. Because the problem is that if I don't kill Diana and the opponent has access to the winding light, we lose the game. I still think if the opponent has access to winding light, we still lose anyways. Onto dusk. Will be out. I, I need. I think I need to look for my stuns. So again, it's winding light, and if the opponent has winding light, we 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 are we're done. And they have it. Because they can go, to, they can give the winding light overwhelm as well. Yeah, they can. They can also give the winding light the overwhelm. Now, what we can do, we can stun now. Stun again with Desert Naturalist, but that's still gonna get them there. Okay, so we have to now wait for them to commit Inferno into something. Whichever one they commit the Inferno, okay, now they just burn us down. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't stop the burn, so GG's. I can't stop the burn, unfortunately. Oh, I didn't get to, I didn't get to shed them over. That was a lot of early aggression that I didn't expect, unfortunately for us, so. In this match, we're going against Sejuani Nora. Now, this is going to be a Spirits Unleash type of deck that then just does a lot of pressure with their going wide unfortunately we, I, I, sh I probably shouldn't have kept the six to be honest i like the shepherd but I, I don't like the six so that was a mistake i wanted to look for drop the bomb and we have it that should allow us to deal with the nora fortunately opponent gets their damage on turn one which does make it a little bit awkward now so this is going to be for nora Second chemist, okay. That's four damage plus five plus six. We got up to twelve. We're gonna We're getting aggro down. We're getting aggro down, and that's a problem. Yep, another chemist. Wow. Uh I think it has to be the bow first. I don't think six really matters right now. Unfortunately for us, we also got another blocker here. We get we get multiple blockers here. Let's just drop the bomb this girl now before the opponent can do Spirits Unleash. There it is, just like we expected. So they go Spirits Unleash, we got the Chemist anyways. We get the Rock there. Oh no, sorry, because he starts discounting the rest, but that's okay. I think I'm attacking with everything. I don't think I care about the opponent blocking. The idea now is that we have enough blockers and we want to turbo level the six. We have the minefield to stop stun something. We have blockers here. We're gonna get another one here. We can play six. Portapalooza and only gets you one portal at most. So something nice. Okay. Not nice enough. Let's let's open attack. Let's open attack with a really big attack. Let's open a time with a really big attack with all my units, assuming that they don't get the portals. If they get the portals, then we want to go Rolling Sands, by the way. Like, if they have another Porto Palooza, the Rolling Sands will make it so that the six will level up. If the opponent hits at least one portal. No, they're just going to go straight down to four. Which means that now we just went through the six burn. Because any unit that they summon, which we know they're forced to because of the portal, is going to level up the six. This is dealing two as well, and this should be game. Opponent's locked down, unless they kill the six somehow. That's even better. Wait, opponent just loses the game now, for sure. This is going to deal one, and then the six is going to burn out the rest. Get that portal, please. 
Yeah, so six levels up. And if they hit that portal that's on top of their deck, which is a 50 50 chance because they already drew two cards after they put the portal down, then we just burn them and they open. They actually didn't hit it, but they don't even want to try. They don't even want to try because the moment they play any unit, they just lose. So, GG's. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you get to these games. It's just, it's just six Talia, right? It's a lot of burn damage between the six and the safety inspector. It's a lot of overwhelm damage because of the absorber. We even got to see that very close Aatrox Kane matchup where I was able to somehow find the lethal at the very last second before my timer ran out. So really cool there. I was trying to see if I was trying, if I could do lethal with like absorber, but then I, you know, at the end I realized that the safety inspector ended up being better. So just be careful because there's a lot of lines where you can find lethal with, with this deck and can be very easy to miss as you saw that we almost missed it ourselves. But as you also saw against that Aphelios Diana deck, we are very vulnerable to super aggression which it seems like that deck was more like a Nightfall aggro deck, more than like an Invoke deck, like I originally thought. So if I knew that from the start, I probably should have been able to play more defensive units early on and not taking as much damage as I did. But lesson learned, lesson learned. Hope you enjoyed today's games. Oh, actually, before I get there, I forgot about Mulligans. Mulligan-wise, we do want a lot of early landmarks. So we do want to have the Chemist, right? Uh, Rock Hopper are very good to start getting the landmarks enabled early on so that you can actually level your six or your Talia. Uh, if I do see the Shepherd into Desert Naturalist combo, I don't mind keeping that, but you do require to have like at least another thing, like the drop on or the chemist to make it work. That way you go like, you know, chemist on turn two, Shepherd on turn three, Desert Naturalist on turn four, on the, on the scrappy one that you get, and that way you get like a super crazy board that the opponent's gonna have a really hard time dealing with because you're gonna end up with two grumpy rock bears that are gonna be five five so just gonna you know just keep that in mind when you try to pull up that combo uh aside from that though i mean there's, there's not a lot more to this deck you want to again start with early blockers and early landmarks and then eventually get your six and your talia your inspector or your herald the magos on the field to kind of finish up again from there i do like keeping right of arcane if i'm going against like gins or if i'm going against like gwen decks because it can punish them even though they have four health and drop the bomb it's a really good keep against like katarina decks where they only have two two health to to deal with us so yeah that'd be it for my mulligan tips hope you enjoyed to these games if you did make sure to like this video below and subscribe to us we post a lot of videos every single day you can also find us on twitch at twitch September. we stream every now and then and you can also find us on discord and twitter the links to those are both in the description below thank you so much for watching i'll see you all again tomorrow